it's time to cross a heavily requested video off the to-do list. Hobby Desk Tour. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. I'm going out of town this week, so I'm not gonna be building anything, but I'm gonna use this opportunity to tackle a video that people ask for all the time. Currently, this might be my most requested video, a tour of my hobby desk. Now, I know a lot of you would like a tour of the whole space, but this beast deserves a video of its own. Having a dedicated and organized workspace is crucial for the way I work as a creative person. This is not something that everyone has the luxury of being able to do, but if you are designing your own workspace, your own workbench, then hopefully this will help. The most important question to answer, what is this desk? I'd love to give you a link to a product so that you could go out and get the exact same thing, but that is not very easy to do. My setup here, is in fact built from Ikea kitchen cabinets. And if you've ever purchased kitchen cabinets from Ikea, you know that all of this is not one simple product to direct you to, it's about 200 individual products. This is just kitchen cabinets. I have a bank of upper cabinets, two lower base cabinets, and a countertop. I built in a little bridge section here so I can use it like a desk, but it's just kitchen cabinets. I opted for the cheapest variety that they sell, which are these black doors with brown carcasses. They're cheap and they match my room perfectly. If you're looking to do something like this, it's actually not that complicated. You can go on the Ikea website, they have a kitchen planner. You can lay it out and it will give you a shopping list with all of the items you need to buy. And then you just need to spend an afternoon assembling it all. I have three 30 inch upper cabinets that each house a different type of stuff, which we'll get to in a minute. The base cabinets, one of them I have with doors and shelves and one of them I have with six shallow drawers. We'll dig into them in a second. Right at my face, I have the things that I use the most. Here I have all of my dropper bottle paint stored and I have a mix of various brands, mostly Reaper, Vallejo, but there's also some Green Stuff World as well as some others. They're all conveniently stored in these paint racks from shiftinglands.com. And I actually have a whole video dedicated to reviewing these paint racks and assembling them. So I'll post that up in the corner. These are really great and they get asked about all the time. I absolutely love them. This whole section, in fact, is kind of a little painting section. On top, I have some of the other non-dropper bottle paints like some GW stuff and some random other bits that sit on top. I prefer to buy things in dropper bottles when I can so that they fit in these racks. This is also where I keep my airbrush compressor and my little cleaning container, my cork board with minis that are to be painted. The idea here is that if they sit here, they inspire me to actually start working on them. It doesn't always really work. So mostly this is a place to hold some unpainted minis that I meant to paint months ago. I also keep my mixer for shaking up my hard to shake paints, some contrast paints that I'm not really gonna talk about because I'm not going down that road. But that is my main painting area. Now let's take a look at these shelves. I get asked all the time, where did I buy these shelves? And the answer is, I didn't. I made them. They are really simple J-shaped shelves made out of half inch MDF. Anyone with even a tiny bit of carpentry skills could make these. It's just a piece of MDF on the back, piece of MDF on the bottom, and a piece of MDF on the front to create a little lip. Really, really simple. Countersunk holes screwed right to the wall. I love these shelves because they keep a lot of stuff easily accessible and visible to me. And this little lip keeps everything organized. Nothing slips off the shelf. Everything 
stays nice and tight and snug. And this is probably one of my favorite parts about my setup. I actually plan on making some more to go down here to hold some other things that aren't being stored in the best way right now. I keep a lot of my most used liquids in these shelves, my airbrushing stuff, glues. So you got all the super glues, activators, tacky glues, Mod Podge, epoxies, everything like that. Washes, inks, textured rolling stuff, all the Vallejo weathering effects and the texture pastes. Things that I wanna have in my kind of view so that when I'm working on something, I think, hey, I should try this water texture. Anybody that's watched any of my videos is very familiar with my cutting mats. They get more screen time than I do. You may have noticed that recently I've actually switched to this black cutting mat, but I've recorded hundreds of videos and projects on this gray Fiskars one. And I absolutely love this thing. The amount of abuse I've put it through and how well it's held up is absolutely incredible. Other than being totally painted and you know, kind of covered in stuff like that, it's still totally fine and actually has a clean side that I could still use. I decided to switch to this black one simply because I thought it looked a little bit better on film. But this Fiskars one is a absolute champ. Now I just use it for painting so that I can try to keep this one clean. But as you can see, I'm already failing at keeping this one clean. Taking up a huge chunk of real estate on my hobby desk is my Proxon hot wire cutter. And for good reason, I use it all the time. This is my number one tool. Without this, I wouldn't be who I am or the channel that I am. This thing is an absolute all-star and I always keep it close at hand, ready to use with my shiftinglands.com guider pro. There's a lot of other jigs and stuff from shifting lands that I have and that I use from time to time and I keep them conveniently located right below in these cabinets. When planning out my desk I opted to keep one of these cabinets without drawers with just shelves and the nice thing about that is it saved me a lot of money because it's a lot cheaper doing shelving than drawers but drawers are better for most things. Most things except big MDF jigs. These shelves is where I keep all of my other shifting lands jigs, including all the ones that I haven't had time to build or try out yet, unfortunately. Keep things that are not used very often, but are pretty big, like this rolling pin and my tumbler of rocks. It's also where I keep my amplifier for music. I unfortunately don't get to listen to music as much as I would like while working because I like recording the sound of what I'm working on. But when I can, I like to blast some tunes. So I got my receiver hidden in this cabinet. I got it hooked up to an old iPhone, which I glued right to the door. So it's really convenient and easy to use. Those feed speakers that are up there. In order to keep these speakers out of my way and to not take up valuable space, I decided to just screw them right to the end gables of these cabinets and they just float, which is pretty great. And it gives me another shelf where I can keep things like the factory rip fence from the Proxon that I don't use very often, but I use it for cross cuts and this keeps it close at hand. Now let's take a peek at what's inside each of these upper cabinets. The first cabinet is where I keep a lot of liquids and spray paints and glues and that sort of thing. So I have my collection of primers, caulking, spray adhesives, rubber gloves, PVA glue, mixing cups, floor polish, which is great for making quick washes, plasticine for when I'm doing mold making, grout for doing textures on buildings. And then I have kind of all my sculpting stuff. So I got stuff like Milliput, green stuff, all the tools to use it. Fimo, Sculpey, don't really use these too often. Behind door number two is, I guess what you would call bits. It's all the sort of things that I would use as elements in a build. So this is where I keep containers of things like popsicle sticks, skewers, tongue depressors, coffee stirrers, little dowels, wood blocks, that sort of thing. I also keep my collection of random beads. 
little things that I found along the way that might be useful at some point in time, like plastic spider or all the lids from super glue containers that I've been saving for something. I also keep some sprues because they might be handy for something, although I haven't used them yet. Boxes of random things like tea lights and plastic skulls. Off cuts of foam where I've made extra and not used it all in a project. I have all my MDF windows and little bits like that. Then just random things that I might use on a build like miniature chain or wire, empty containers that I get when I buy super glue. I keep these because they're super handy for mounting minis to for painting. The last cabinet is where I keep all of my natural stuff. So all my flocking, my stones, my twigs, my plants, my shrubbery, my little static grass tufts, that all lives in here. Basically all of the nature elements that I might add to a finished project. And I like to keep all of this stuff separate and together because it all kind of plays the same role in a build. So when I'm looking for natural things to decorate a piece with, I can just come to this cupboard and see what strikes my fancy. Below this, we have the drawers. Deciding to take one of these lower cabinets and fill it up with shallow drawers was one of the best decisions I made on this desk. And I actually didn't make that decision right out of the gate. Originally, it also had doors and shelves, but I found it to be totally useless. So I actually came back in and added a bunch of drawers and I'm really glad that I did. You'll notice though that I don't have handles on them because I haven't found handles that I like yet and handles are expensive. So the top drawer is where I have all of my most used small tools. And this has the drawer organizer that I built in a previous video. Check it out up there. All of my most used little hand tools close by. I usually end up just keeping this drawer open while I'm working and I take things in and out of it all the time. Below that is my paint drawer. All of my expensive, nice modeling paints are kept up in those racks, but all my cheap craft paints, which get used a fair bit, all live in this drawer here. And these shallow drawers are perfect for this because I can just lay them all out flat. It's not really that wasteful on space and everything is easily visible and I don't have to worry too much about organizing. I just kind of keep similar colors together. It's quick and easy to pull things out and shift them around and it's really, really great. I love this solution, to be quite honest. Below that, I have my paper drawer. This is where I keep a lot of flat paper type products. So my cereal boxes, corrugated paper, construction paper, chipboard, leftover pieces of foam pour, parchment paper, masking paper, all that sort of stuff. It's not the most organized of drawers, but because everything is so similar and all in one place, I can quickly and easily find what I need. These shallow drawers are, again, perfect for storing this sort of thing. I don't actually remember what's in the drawer below this one. It doesn't get accessed very often. Oh yeah, this is kind of just random stuff. So I have some extra handheld hot wire tools that I don't use very often, but they are here. I have all of my electrical stuff, soldering, LEDs, that stuff that I again, don't use very often. Sponges, Q-tips, towel. I have a towel in here. Don't forget to bring a towel. Below that, I have my molds drawer. So these are silicone molds that I've made in the past that I've decided to keep. And again, shallow drawers are a great way to store this. I also keep some mold released and sculpt a mold which isn't actually used in these molds, but they both have the word mold in them, so it makes sense that they're together, I guess, right? And the last drawer is again, some random stuff. It's where I keep my mask, my heat gun, rubber bands, and things like old templates and test patterns and pieces that I've made when testing products and do want to keep for reference. I actually want to show you guys what's directly beneath where I sit. Below my desk, there's actually some pretty important stuff to my workflow. 
garbage can for obvious reasons, paper towel in a paper towel holder that is quick and easy to change, this is one of the most important things I've ever installed in this workspace. It is absolutely awesome. I lived a very long time with paper towel just floating around, sitting wherever. This little holder is great, and it's right there, right beside me for when I need it. Up here, I also have a huge power distribution bar where I plug everything in because there's actually a fair bit of electronics going on this hobby desk that I need to keep plugged in on at all times. I got hot wires, multiple glue guns, lights, my audio stuff, just more than you would expect for a hobby like this. This keeps it all organized. But the most important thing that lives under my desk is my shop vac. I keep this plugged in and right beside me at all times because so much of what I do is really messy and I like to clean up periodically during a build to keep things tidy because it's just really annoying to try to work with a mess, especially a mess of dust or little particles of foam. When you're working with foam, you wanna have a shop vac. It deals with all those little floaty, staticky pieces that drive you crazy. Well, I guess that's a wrap. Basically covers everything. I hope that this has satisfied the curiosity of all the people who have asked me to make this video. If you like this video, hit the like button and let me know in the comments section below. I didn't go into great detail about each and every tool or supply here, because all of that stuff is really well covered in my videos where I actually use them, as well as on my essential equipment page on blackmagiccraft.ca. That's where I have the links to all the stuff I use that I recommend, where you can buy them and support the channel in the process by using those affiliate links. If you found this video and my other videos helpful and you wanna help me keep making them, consider supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. It's through the support there that I'm able to dedicate my full-time effort into this channel. I'd love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. It's a great place you can ask me questions, especially in the Facebook group or the Discord server that you get access to by joining. Well, that's it for this one, guys. If you're watching this, it means that I made it home safely from my trip to remote northern Canada. I didn't get eaten by a polar bear or lost in the bush. So that's good. I'm really happy about that. See you guys again next week. Cheers.